out. George Bush's axis of evil. You'll meet Abraham Yazdi, who helped bring Ayatollah Khomeini to power in the Islamic Revolution back in 1979. Now, Yazdi is leading the forces of a new kind of change in Iran, but can Iran trust him? And is democratic reform even possible in an Islamic state? Please stay with us. We'll be back after this short break. If we have a true republic, Islamic element will be preserved. When Islamic democracy is very much an oxymoron, they don't go together. Our next story takes place in a country at a crossroads. Iran is holding parliamentary elections in a couple of weeks, but will the 46 million eligible voters really have a say in that outcome? More than 2,000 reformist candidates have already been banned from running by Iran's ruling Council of Guardians. And this week, 124 parliamentaries quit in protest. And Iran's largest reform party said it's boycotting the election. One of the leading reformers in Iran is Ebrahim Yazdi. He's not only banned from running, he's facing trial on charges of undermining the state. And there's an irony, because 25 years ago this week, Yazdi helped create that state. He played a key role in the revolution that toppled the Western-backed Shah and brought the Ayatollah to power. Now Yazdi is calling for a new revolution of democratic reform. To some Iranians, Yazdi is the hope of the future, but to others, he's a villain from the past. 25 years ago this week, a coalition of liberal and conservative clerics, intellectuals, and academics led a popular revolution in Iran that toppled the Western-backed Shah from power. At first, the Islamic Republic of Iran was led by a broad spectrum of conservatives and liberals. But within 10 months, the liberals in the ruling coalition found themselves pushed to the sidelines by the more radical conservatives. The clerics, led by Ayatollah Khomeini, took center stage, and they've been running things ever since. Today, Iran is in the throes of a new round of discontent. 70% of the population is under the age of 30, and many are dissatisfied by the clerical rule. In a couple of weeks, new parliamentary elections will be held, pitting the large and relatively powerless reform-minded movements against the conservative clerics. In all of this, Ibrahim Yazdi has been a constant presence. Yazdi, as a close confidant and advisor of Ayatollah Khomeini before and during the 1979 revolution, took the foreign ministry and deputy prime ministership, only to be pushed out of the ruling party ten months later. Now, in 2004, he is reviled by the ruling clerics as the leader of the reformist Iran Freedom Movement, and he is awaiting trial on charges of trying to overthrow the state. While Ibrahim Yazdi represents the hopes of many, there are others who remember his seminal role in the 1979 revolution. For them, he is a part of the problem that needs to be changed. Right now, I'm the Secretary General of the Freedom Movement of Iran, one of the main uh, opposition parties in Iran. I was a member of the Revolutionary Council during the revolution. I was a special uh, representative of Khomeini before the revolution. I was the deputy prime minister and foreign minister. So all of it together make my position a very unique. So this is the first time that they are going to address a person in my capacity. I think it would not be without any cost for them. They have charged me for acting against the, against the security of the state. They have accused me of uh, trying to overthrow the government. We do not uh, want to overthrow the system, but rather we uh, say that the authorities must either change their policy and abide by the law, or um, uh, people will change them. We are uh, after changing the authorities. Pas 
فصل سفت و هفتاد نه در شهرستان ها و علیه About 22 years ago I was 13 years old in Iran that, that was the time for revolution That was the time that I was introduced to this group and Mr. Dr. Yazdi. I believe in him and his party as a people who really, really um, want democracy for Iran. Um, they introduced a new Islam to Iran. We say that Islamic Republic has two pillars, two components, Islamic and Republic. The righteous, they say that Islamic is very important. We say no Republican Party is very important. If we have a true Republic, Islamic element will be preserved. You talked about an Islamic Republic, and I want to know how you espouse in a multicultural, multilingual, multiracial country to have such a thing as an Islamic Republic. Islam and democracy cannot meet because by definition, a democracy is a secular state. So an Islamic democracy it's very much an oxymoron. They don't go together. Democracy in Iran will prevail. But it may not be the same democracy that you have here. The same way that your democracy, American democracy, is different than the British. The British is different than France. In France is different than Germany. Because each one of you coming from a different history, with different experience, historical experiences, that will be the same true with Iranian democracy. It will be democratic, but however, it is unavoidable to have the Islamic element there. So what you're seeing is a tape from that was played on Iranian TV after uh, Khomeini arrived. Here on the left is uh, Mr. Ibrahim Yazdi, who was at the time a professor in uh, Texas at a university there, and he's come back uh, had brought Khomeini from France in and is now playing Inquisitor. So here Mr. Mr. Yazdi is asking questions to General Rahimi who was a general in the Shah's army and asking him if he's still loyal to the government at the time where Mr. Rahimi says yes I this gentleman here says yes I took an oath and I'm still loyal Mr. Yazdi clearly states that they are going to be punished under Islamic laws or any other members of our party being involved in any of these uh, kind of their uh, acts that they are relating to us. It is completely baseless. I uh, recommend to them that they should uh, first go and read books, read the history of their own country, and then come forward and make such a uh, uh, severe accusation. He is one of the founders of Islamic regime. And still, he thinks that this uh, kind of regime can be, like, uh, liberalized. This kind of regime cannot be liberalized. This regime has to go away. But that's what we believe. I'm one of the members of the Communist Party of Iran. I don't think that the young people of Iran um, believe what Mr. Yazdi has to say. I think the young people of Iran are at a place where they look upon um, the revolution that their parents brought about with uncertainty, and I think that they don't want the same thing to happen to them. Mr. Yazdi right now, if he has any sort of uh, following, is because he is one of lesser evil. He's not of the government, and yet he's not really putting forth a platform for democratic institution in, in, in the country of Iran. I do not regret my involvement in the revolution and uh, the role that I played. I may 
have some reservation, regret for some of the action here or there. It's obvious. I think that was a great revolution, a historical revolution, one of the classical revolution, popular revolution. Uh, it was unavoidable. And I'm glad that I was a part of it. Abraham Yazdi is still waiting to go on trial. The case keeps getting postponed. It probably won't uh, begin now until after the elections. When he finally does go on trial, Yazdi's defense team will include Shirin Abadi, the Iranian human rights activist and lawyer who won last year's Nobel Peace Prize. We'll be keeping a close eye on the Iranian elections and on Yazdi's trial, and we will, of course, keep you posted. Next week, we'll have a different view from Iran. It's a CBC News Sunday exclusive interview with three Iranian sisters who were jailed, tortured, and sentenced by Iran's Islamic courts in a public flogging, all for the crime of allegedly having a boyfriend.